I wanted to start by telling you a story about a girl whose family was seeking to leave um, a civil war. Her parents tried everything to try to get to America, but the only country that they could actually seek harbor in was Nigeria. Her parents were both teachers, and they knew the importance of education. And so they knew of America as the promised land, a place where through education and hard work, their daughter could achieve anything that she dreamt of. By stark contrast, they also knew that in parts of Nigeria, less than half of the girls were enrolled in secondary school. And they knew that all over the country, over five million girls were out of school. Of course, what they didn't know was that in northern Nigeria, where they were planning to live, over 200 girls would be targeted and ultimately kidnapped by Boko Haram just because they were trying to get an education. Tragically, these statistics and these barriers are not unique to Nigeria. In fact, less than one-third of girls in sub-Saharan Africa and less than one-half of girls in South Asia are currently enrolled in secondary school. In Somalia, 95% of girls are currently not in school. And these numbers add up. Across the world, over 62 million girls are out of school today. And what breaks my heart is the fact that none of this is by accident, and all of it is preventable. The barriers that keep girls out of school are both big and small, pervasive and persistent. Everything from extreme poverty, where parents can't even pay small school fees, to the fact that some girls are forced into early child marriages, to the fact that some schools don't have girls' bathrooms. And so when girls try to go to the local middle or high school, they have no ability to even use a toilet. To address these barriers, the President and First Lady launched Let Girls Learn last March, March of 2015, in order to support the 62 million girls who should be in school, but are not. Because we know that by investing in these girls, by giving them an education, there are no limits to what they can achieve and the impact they can have. We know, for example, that educated girls are able to raise healthier families. A Lancet study, for example, has shown that increase in girls' education was responsible for more than half the reduction in child morbidity and mortality that was experienced between 1970 and 2009. We know that educated girls earn higher incomes. And what's striking is how significant the impact is. For each additional year of secondary school, a girl's earning potential increases by 15 to 25 percent. And we know that more girls in school can boost a country's entire economy, which is why economists like Larry Summers have concluded that girls' education is the single highest return investment we can make in the developing world. And girls who become leaders in their communities and their countries take on issues ranging from public health to the environment to issues related to conflict and war. And yet, even knowing all of these benefits and so many more, we still aren't able to guarantee girls an education. So you may ask, why am I so personally passionate? about girls' education. Because that story that I told you at the start of this talk about the girl and her family, that's my story. Just as my family was about to leave Sri Lanka for Nigeria, my parents got their green cards to come to America. And so I had the opportunity to go to Yale and Oxford and Yale Law School, and now to work with the First Lady. And that's why I'm here today. And that's why I'm here to ask for your help. Because every girl around the globe, regardless of where she was born, deserves a quality education. And that's why I'm here to ask for your help today. Because you represent and lead 
corporations and small businesses and foundations that are transforming industries and fields. You lead organizations and movements that are changing people's lives. And by your examples and how you've chosen to invest your time and money, you've shown fidelity to the fundamental principle that a girl's ability to achieve her dreams should only be limited by her imagination. We know that girls' education is the best investment we can make, not just in their futures, but in the future of their families, their communities, and countries. And that's why it's our responsibility as leaders, as philanthropists, as citizens of this country and our world to help let girls learn.